unique set of events last mm -hmm. weekend for the Colts. They finally get something done with Jonathan Taylor after months of uncertainty, signed him to a contract. The next day, it's Zach Moss who's running wild for Indianapolis. How do you see Zach Moss right now, and how do you envision this sort of split playing out here over the rest of the season? You know, Tom, I always believe in playing a hot hand. And Zach Moss has a hot hand. You know, it's, it's football, poker, blackjack. You play the hot hand. And so every running back has got to do a little dance with the offensive line, where the holes are going to be, how it's going to open up. And right now, Zach Moss is doing a good dance with it. And nothing more than the 56-yard touchdown run right here for the Colts opening. Touchdown, Tom. And when I watch it, you know, Jonathan Taylor missed the offseason, missed preseason. I don't care that he's an elite back. He's won the rushing title. He's done all that stuff. Right now, Zach Moss is a better fit. I saw Jonathan Taylor run six times for 18 yards, but I saw Zach Moss. And what I see from him is hitting the hole, Tom, and then yards after contact, constantly yards after contact. He's got a rookie left tackle in Blake Freeland. He's kind of working his way in next to Big Q. Quentin Nelson, who's, I think, playing the best football. I've seen him play in the last three years. Ryan Kelly back in there. Like, I wouldn't disturb what the Colts are doing right now on the ground, Stacey. Well, I mean, Zach Moss, to your point, hey, Tom, uh, is third in the National Football League in rush yards. What has he got? Four, 445. Seven games with the Colts dating back to last season. He's averaging about 100 on the ground. And now you go in with Gardner Minshew at quarterback to Jacksonville as you try to you know, overtake the lead in the AFC South. The, the winner of this game will do so. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's kind of interesting. Zach Moss, neither he nor uh, Jonathan Taylor obviously played in week one. So these are two different football teams. Mm -hmm. And the team that we just saw, I love your accent, Tom. That was fantastic. We need more of that. <laughs> Little Richard Graves action. I was Graves told we, we want less, but thank you. No, more, it. more. Uh, the team that we just saw in Jacksonville, you guys, played their best football. The Jacksonville Jaguars and, and Trevor Lawrence coming off of his first 300-plus pass yard game. Uh, Travis Etienne just went off on the ground over 130 yards on the ground against a really good Buffalo Bills defense despite losing Matt Milano in that football game. As we watch the, the footage here from that outing, they're coming back with worlds of confidence. And the quarterback, Trevor Lawrence, he said it this week, we grew. We started off the season, we weren't playing the best football but there was a bonding experience that took place. Now, coming back to the United States, guys, the head coach, Doug Peterson, has had to really curtail some of what they do on the field this week to try to get their bodies back. Listen, I spent two weeks over there last year. I don't play football. I had a big adjustment. I had the weekend off afterwards. These guys have to play a very good Colts team. I know you're high on them, Baldy, but uh, when you listen to Gus Bradley and you talk about strategizing against Trevor Lawrence in this offense, he talks about the run game. He talks about the pass game this week, the RPOs, the play action, and all the different route combinations that those receivers for Doug Peterson and Trevor Lawrence have. They have a task at hand. And by the way, they have not won recently. The last time they won in Jacksonville was 20, week three of 2014. So they got some work to do on Sunday.